They want us to think that we're an insignificant speck of dust, but let me tell you, we are so much more than dust in the wind. At least 4 billion useless eaters will be eliminated by the year 2050. I'm still waiting for somebody to show me gas pressure without a container. I personally don't believe anything they say, right down to the god they claim they worship. None of the math adds up. You could stack up all their math books, all their science books, and even put all their degrees stacked up on top of that, and you still wouldn't be high enough to see the curvature. This, 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 this is exactly why grounding is so important. too far. We're just regular people who know we're being lied to, we're tired of it. The bottom line is, there's only one choice left, and that's to dismantle this whole thing from the, from top, the top down. down. Welcome to the Phone Booth Podcast. Please keep your arms and legs inside the phone booth at all times. We are not responsible for any lost or stolen souls, destroyed realities, or blown minds. I am Ted Theodore Logan, here with Bill, Rufus, and Death. What's up, guys? Yo, uh, here's another one. <laughs> another one? Yeah. Another one another of the podcast. Ad- another banger. Another yes, I-, right. I learned on I'm Raven's so show the other day that if you make it past seven, that's when you last. So I, this is like 12 or 13, something like that. I can't even oh, yeah. Anymore. So yeah, we're good. Seven's the number? I, apparently so. They said it like 32 times in their episode. So I'm assuming that they're correct on that. It wasn't really. Three times? <laughs> no. It's no. Raven. I doubt it. They kept it right. <laughs> I was going to say they kept it right there, didn't they? <laughs> so tonight we have someone who I've been looking forward to talking to for a while, and I don't even know how to introduce her, and I don't even know what we're going to get into because I've heard her talk about many, many awesome things. But tonight we have Angela Maggard. How are you tonight? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you for coming. So... What knowledge do you have for us tonight? Where do you want to start? I don't even know where to start. I guess I'm going to start at the beginning. I guess that's that's, the that, way to go that's always a good place. That's always a good place. <laughs> so I was born March fifteenth, nineteen eighty seven, in Hornet County, North Carolina. Um, my birth mother's name was Kelly Williford. Um, I I found her on accident. But that's a, that goes further on in the story. Um, but I was kidnapped and sold as a baby into a military family. My father was handed a baby October 27, 1987, the day he became a Green Beret. His name was Master Sergeant Stephen Maggard. He's a part of 3rd Group Special Forces here at Fort Bragg. Um, he's third generation Special Forces. His father is Sanders Eugene Maggard. He was a part of Operation Jedi Warrior, which was a psychic super soldier program here at Fort Bragg in the 70s. His wife, Ann Jutman, um, she was a part of Operation Grill Flame, Project Stargate, Project Sunstreak, Center Lane, Gondola's Wish, star flame and she now works for a corporation called psi tech i am trying to bring awareness that they test and torture children at wright patterson air force base for psi research my father was unalived father's day in 2007 my birth mother was unalived on my birthday in 2018 um, at unc chapel hill she was electrocuted from the inside out and i was refused an autopsy because i had to prove that i was her daughter so instead of cremating her like she wished i buried her so that way i could prove it long term that's a hell of an icebreaker wow wow okay um (laughs) that's that's right i didn't tell them anything about what we were getting into tonight oh bless your heart i wanted no i wanted the natural reaction so he got it (laughs) it's gonna be crazy awesome (laughs) Now I post non-disclosure agreements, redacted and non-redacted information, everything I can find, I post it all. I use my real government name on purpose just because I want accountability and justice more than anything. Wow. Okay. So can you start by maybe describing a little bit of these operations and and what they're about? Oh, sure. Um, So um, let's start with the Stargate project. That was mainly focused on psychic remote viewing, astral travel, um, and they dabbled a little bit with telepathic hypnosis. 
Um, now, not to sound like a smartass, like, but is this like the the movie The Men Who Stare at Goats or whatever? Is it that kind of That those? was Operation Jedi Warrior. That okay. was what my grandfather was a part of, okay. yes. Oh, that wow. That was one project inside of, of the Stargate project. There was many different projects. So when you say Stargate project, that's really just like an umbrella term. Okay. That's actually where my grandparents met was the Stargate project. He actually cheated on his first wife and um, then got married to, you know, his second wife. That was all before I was born. So I always knew I had grew two grandma grandfathers. I just never knew the extent of it or how the whole thing went down. Now, when you say your grandfather, do you mean your birth grandfather or in the Father. family? You that's were... my adopted family. Okay. So when I say that, yeah, I always say like family, like that's always my adopted family. Okay. My okay. birth mother, I always say birth mom. You'll never hear me talk about my, my, my adopted mother as being my mother because that woman locked me in a dog cage, stabbed me in the chest with a butcher knife, burnt my butt on a stove, forced me to lay out naked in the snow. She physically tortured me, and she's still alive, um, still highly respected, and I'm going to take her down. Okay. I was going to say, we might be able to connect she you with a few She comes from a phone very numbers. prominent family. <laughs> um, they have a lot of money, a lot of it. She's a trust fund baby, so they think that they can just buy their way out of everything. They were able to illegally obtain my sealed adoption file, which nobody else is supposed to have access to except for me. So that's the one good thing that I have. That's an open and shut case, that they don't have that file here at all. Wow. Whew, okay. Um... And I know they don't have it because I found it when I was seven and I hit it. Good for you. And Star Stargate, what it, are we talking yeah, like? This... Are we talking like uh, the movie Portal? kind of thing, or is this well, like Stargates, a Stargates? That that the real Stargates ties into my father. That's later on. That's like 1991 in Zimbabwe, and then 2002 like Kandahar. But that's like a difference. There's there's Stargates, and then there's the Stargate Project. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's what I was mainly like, so. So one doesn't have anything to do with the other. Basically, they're two separate no, things. No, they don't. Okay. okay. So... About but what? Go ahead, Rufus. Oh, I was saying, but you know about both the Stargate project and actual Stargates, or? Oh, I do, yes, sir. Oh, I can't wait to hear. <laughs> My father was a part oh, of a yeah. recon team in 2002, um, involving a giant where a man was speared to death. In and I've actually posted that photo. Yes, I he posted was part that of that. that I posted a video a while ago of one of the soldiers that were in that talking about it. Yeah, my father's name is Master Sergeant Stephen Maggard. He was a part of. He trained a bunch of terrorist classes here at Fort Bragg. He was part of NSCOM. You can read a lot of articles about him. His job was to put thoughts into other people's heads. Whoa. Whew. Okay. Um. And he was handed a baby the day he became a Green Beret. He also the reason why he lost custody of me was because in 1991 he tried to go AWOL and take me out of the country. What would make a man of that caliber risk his entire military career for a baby that he was just handed three months before? You tell me. Yeah, I'm that's, curious. That's the question I'm trying to figure out. I would love. Oh. That. I don't have the answer to that yet. I, my uncle oh, is wow. on Twitter. His name is Mark Maggard. Um, he speaks about this stuff actively. So I do have family members. I have cousins, same grandparents. You know, so like there are other family members around that are actively speaking on this. But I would recommend having my uncle on here one day just because he is a Marine, you know, mm -hmm. and he does speak about, you know, all the stuff that's going on and how dangerous it is speaking about this. We, would love, he is, we would love to. He's witnessed everything I've had to walk off. Wow. So when did you start finding out about all this? Age seven. That's when I started writing. I have journals from then. I'm 36. Ooh. So the Operation Stargate, is that what it's called? Um, Stargate Project. It sorry, was yeah, sorry, Grill sorry. I, okay. It started with Grill Flame. Okay, so you want to delve into that a little bit and tell us what it's about? Um, so my grandmother was actually recruited. Both of my grandparents were. They were both previously army. Um, so uh, my grandmother was really respected. She has a bunch of articles and stuff on her for her military career. Um, but she basically scored really, really high with her psychic remote viewing. So she was able to advance into other projects where most people would wash out with one or two. She was actually one of the ones that made it all the way to the end. Okay. Okay. So they would start off, um, and mainly it started off with trying to keep up with the Soviets um, and all the different, you know, military stuff that was going on. They did have a lot of success stories with locating people and um, different targets. 
Okay. So how are they locating them? Are they? It's literally using your mind. Remote viewing. It sounds yeah. crazy out loud, but it's remote viewing. Yes. Okay. It's... Doesn't sound crazy to me. I believe people can do it. Oh, I know it's true, 100. percent Like I told you, I didn't even have like anything. I didn't know my mom. I had no information other than her first name, and I didn't know she had changed her name. So I originally thought her name was Callie. You know, so I was searching for this woman with no luck whatsoever, not knowing that this woman was, had changed her name, was trying to drop off the face of the planet just because she was scared to death, you know. So I found my mom through a dream. I have no logical explanation for it whatsoever because I'm not really religious. I'm spiritual, but these things have happened throughout my life. Wow. And I'm really blessed that I still have people alive that were in the car with me when all this stuff unfolded. So what's like what kind of technology are they using to like tap into other people? Are they tapping into other people's brains or their locations? Or oh, absolutely! I've actually posted a lot of patents about this, a lot of um, declassified files that they've already released. Um, there's a lot of documents supporting. That. They've done war crimes on U.S. soil. It's, it's it's war crimes against humanity, in mass form. I have but... zero doubt of that. They do crap like that all the time. So. So they were using remote viewing to spy on Americans as well, correct? Yes. Um, and I don't – this is a heavy allegation, so I'm going to be very careful with how I say this. But okay. I have no solid proof. This is just family um, speculation. But there was a Russian mole around that time during these projects. And I have firm suspicions that my grandmother was a part of that. Wow. <laughs> have you talked to your grandmother about all of this oh yes i actually gave astral her phone number and he didn't tell me if she called him back or anything so i don't even know like i gave him her actual cell phone number oh yeah you you actually gave me her cell phone number too but like i told you i said i would i would wait to talk to you until if you, anyone yeah. can get her to talk like i told her i'm i'm in it to, i want accountability more than anything she's had 36 years to come forward and get her story straight at the end of the day, I want to know who exchanged hands, who was complacent, and who knew, who was aware. Because she could have told me this stuff was real, you know, instead of taking photos of me with these entities my entire life, gaslighting me, telling me that spirits were, that it was all in my head, that I was crazy. And the entire time she's getting a paycheck for it for the government, like, it's personal. Now, <laughs> you think she just, like, didn't want you to figure out, or? I wholeheartedly do not think they wanted me to figure it out. Like, you don't understand the way I was raised. I grew up in a bubble. I didn't have any like outside interaction with other kids or, you know, like just normal interactions. It was a very, very controlled environment. And then as soon as I started, I started running away at age five, um, 17, I successfully got away and I didn't go back. I went back after my father passed away. I was 19 years old and I actually had to call CPS 911 on myself to get free because my adopted mother had barricaded me in the house um, in the middle of a blizzard. I had just had an emergency C-section and I had to have a spinal tap later on because I was leaking spinal fluid. So I, it was, it's called a spinal headache. It's excruciating. You're oh. not even, you can't lift over 10 pounds. You sound is unbearable, but I had a, for a week. Um, she had taken the phone cords and the internet cords so that I couldn't call out. She didn't want me to have any contact with my children's father, which at that time I didn't understand grooming. You have to think I went through all this abuse. So my mentality was a little bit younger. So in a way she was kind of correct, but, and, she was extremely abusive. That was my abuser trying to play savior and like, I couldn't do it. So I remembered that my father had a phone cord, like a cord phone in the closet. So I had grabbed it because he always told me, even if the power is out, you could plug this in and you can call 911. So I called 911, told them what was happening. They came and they got me and my son and took me to my grandmother's house. And then that next Monday I got on a plane ticket, went back to Florida and I have never stepped foot back in the state of Ohio since. And she has contacted me since. She's tried to get me to come back out there and take care of her because she's sick again. But I absolutely refuse. I will not put myself back in that situation to be around that woman just because she lacks empathy. She doesn't understand or even – she won't apologize. And I've messaged this woman in text in depth all the abuse that I remember her doing, just asking her for her to apologize, and she won't. She won't even see me. I've tried egging her on, like, from, you know, talking about this stuff on TikTok, talking about this stuff on Twitter, you know, because it's easier for me to counter sue as opposed to paying all that money out of pocket, you know, for justice. I, I've tried provoking you. I can't get her to take the bait. All right. So, so if you have any questions, anything to keep me on to topic, I have PTSD, so I can easily. <laughs> no, that's. Goals. 
I mean, th th that's totally understandable. I was just kind of like mentioning that, like you could tell you're just strictly talking from memory. Like it's real right. deal stuff. You know what I mean? It's not like a no, scripted like a script. thing here, which is no, beautiful. That's why I try to name dates and stuff that people can go back and maybe find other pieces because like I've been, I've been searching for this my whole life. And so I'm so emotionally invested. Maybe an outside lens can look and find different pieces that I couldn't put together. Like, so how did you get started on trying to figure this out? What was the... Because I, I recognize, well, I was dealing with a lot of paranormal stuff from a very young age. And I just recognized that they were evil. That, that's the only thought process I had is I, I just had to expose them. The only, I was, I felt like I was going to die. That was my thought process. It was sink or swim, fight or fight. When you say entities, what are we talking about here? I have photos, but I, I'm talking about real, actual paranormal. And I don't know. I don't know if you want to call them demons, if you want to call them spirits, aliens, whatever. I don't know. I go with Things demons. Things that were not there. Generally. If they didn't give you a good feeling, I'm going to go with demons. I think I've dealt with both. Okay. Fair I enough. I mean, do you see where you're coming from? Yes. But that's mostly feelings. But, but yes, I... I I don't know how to explain that properly. <laughs> we probably don't have the words for it. Yeah. No, we there in I mean we've talked to other people that have had almost kind of similar story, not exactly the same, but I was just wondering if like there are any parallels to I just know that it doesn't stay to one like house or one place. I've moved all around the country different locations and they it follows. So it's something that I've dealt with since I was a little girl and I don't know if it's because I was revived at birth. Or if it's because I died more than three times before age 12, I figured maybe those would, might, might be, you know, factors. Also, you know, my medical records, you know, my doctor, I have overactive adrenal glands, which is, you know, a prolonged exposure to fight or flight for your body being in a mm -hmm. heightened state. So it's able, it's, it's medically documented, the abuse that I've gone through. And so when you say you died three times before 12, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Sure, I can. Uh, well, my adopted mom put a butcher knife to my chest. She stabbed me. It was one way. That was the way she lost custody of me. But I actually, um, <sighs> the one memory that stands in my head was I was actually, uh, my mom would lock me out of the house. Whenever I would get out of school, I had to stay on the porch until she would get home. And like, I was really a priss pot. I was not going to pee outside. So I had this image in my head. I was going to put this bucket out outside my window. I was going to climb in, go to the bathroom and sneak out. And she was never going to know. It wasn't going to be a big deal. So I was short. I was really, really tiny. So I got on this bucket. I got the window up. I got my head through the ledge. And then the ledge, the window shut on my neck. And I couldn't reach the bucket anymore. I have no, I have no explanation for how I got on the floor in my room. There were two cats in the house. There was, it's rural Ohio. There's no neighbors. There's no... There's nobody there, but I woke up like on the floor in my room, like scared to death, freaked out. I went to the bathroom and I snuck back out the house and I never told a soul. I didn't tell anybody because I was scared to death, but I, I was out of it for at least an hour or two. I have, I have no clue what the hell happened. It scared the shit out of me. Wow. What was the and other? That's actually how I found my, my file is like I used to sleepwalk really bad and I used to scare my adopted mom really, really bad. I also used to sleep with my eyes open. But one of these times when I was sleepwalking, she had woken up and all the lights were on in the house, all the doors were open, everything was open and I was in my bed. She freaked out thinking someone had broken in, closed everything up, you know, checked around the house, no one was there, she went back to bed. A couple hours later, she woke up to all the lights on, all the doors open again, except this time I was in her closet. Um, and I didn't put two and two together till years later, but that is literally in her closet. That is where I had found her, her file a couple years later. So I, I don't know wow. what was bringing me there, but I took it as a positive because it was kind of like helping me get answers. Right. Man, that's crazy. You know, I used to sleepwalk too, but like the only thing that I ever found was a bunch of candy. I, in my <laughs> next so well, I, have, I have two stepsisters who also mother. went through these abuse. They do not the speak speech. out just because they're um they're freaking traumatized. But Allison and Samantha Walker, um, they're twins from Ohio. They were they went through this abuse with my mom, and I told their father what was happening. His name was Dale Walker. So if you can get a hold of that gentleman, um, I'm pretty sure he can collaborate a lot of this stuff because I I was not even seven years old. I was maybe five or six when I told him that my mom 
put his daughter's butt on a stove that she had forced us to lay out naked in the snow. I told him everything. And I had gone to, for the summer to my father's house, you know, to Fort Bragg. And when I came back at the end of the summer, he had already left there. So I know he at least listened. Are you guys taking notes here? Or? Yeah. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> They've married since then, so it's Samantha Chris and Allison. Um, what's her last name? Actually, I don't know it offhand, but I wait. Cop Copenhaver. Copenhaver, I think is what it's called. So, what? So we're in Ohio. What, this, anyways. Keenan, Ohio, right outside of Fort um, Wright Patterson Air Force Base, which historically is really important. Um, they found 13 foot tall giant horned skeletons in the mound of Enon. Um, it's dated from, they said anywhere from 800, 8,000 BC to um, 500 BC. I don't know exactly. They don't know exactly. They just know it's really, really old, ice age old. They also found a tablet there that correlates with Gobeki Tepe in Turkey and in Jalisco, Mexico, in between Guadalajara and Jalapa. And I only know this because that's where my grandfather moved after that whole thing with Operation Jedi Warrior. He Down there? Down there. Yes, he lived in Jalisco. Do you think it was wow. some sort of Stargate or something? And that's why all those documents. I there? I do because I know we we stole our first one in, in Zimbabwe in nineteen ninety one and we stole our second one in two thousand and two. Stole? Yes, we stole it. In Zimbabwe so, in 1991, that was around what is that like the Gulf? Was that the Gulf? Was that yeah? Like, um, yeah. Storm? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, it was. What did we steal? Stargate. A Stargate. Stargate, among oh, other wow. technology, but that was one of many. We 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 robbed that country blind. We did some really bad things. <sighs> and I'm not saying like me, but I mean like my family. And well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to process this. And give me a second. <laughs> and you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and say it because you know what? Why not? But I'm also investigating um, third group special forces at Fort Bragg with their trafficking ring that has been going on for a long time. They had some there arrests back in January, but this is still ongoing. Um, I've singled it down to the bar that they're roofing the girls. I actually have, I'm in contact with a couple of the girls that are survivors and trying to bring, expose it from the inside out. Is this tied in with the dumbs and all that? I don't know. Honestly, I have no clue. I'm just winging it. I just can't right. take my cheek to a 19-year-old. That sounds exactly like what they were doing in MK Ultra with the with the brothels. Now, I have proof of them testing on children at Wright Pat, but the documents I found was for 1984 and 1986. And I'm specifically looking for the years 1991 through 1999. And I did make contact with a guy on Twitter in a space on Friday morning, which I'm super excited. He said he can't get me the documents, but he put me in a touch with a guy who will. Wow. That's awesome. And I don't know if it's legal, and I really don't care. I just want the documents yeah. to get to court. <laughs> <laughs> And so how did you become privy to all this information? Mostly just shutting up and listening, rubbing elbows. I grew up, I know people that are involved in projects right now that I can't say anything about just because I don't want to jeopardize them because I care about them. But I do not trust them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Are these and I grew up thinking these people as my uncles, you know, they, they're my dad's battle buddies. I grew up with them not realizing these are contract killers. That's what they do. You know, I didn't. I didn't realize the type of people that I was associating with from the jump. So all this stuff is still going on? Oh, yes, sir. PSI Tech, and everyone argues about that, but PSI Tech changed hands a couple of years ago. So the information that they're seeing is, is new, but PSI Tech's been around since the 80s. It's old. And they contract out. What does PSI stand for? Do you know? Um, I do, but I don't have it offhand. It's it's pretty much paranormal. Ugh, I don't want to. I don't want to butcher it. Okay, that's fine. No, no, no big deal. We'll, we'll check it out. Um, all this being recorded anyway. You're on a recorded line. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, insurance um, wow, Ted. So I know that <clears throat> Rufus just brought it up. Also. I think, it, unless I'm going crazy, I heard you talking in a space about how your birth mother was a product of MK Ultra. MK Ultra. Yes, she was actually missing like five months of her pregnancy. She woke up to like mid-pregnant. 
pregnant as fuck and was given the ultimatum to get married or have an abortion. So she married the first man. Well, she thought she could trust him, but she didn't realize that his father was a really, really bad dude. Like three letter K agents, you know, like that that group and a big drug dealer. Like, yeah, like, and I know his name. I found him. (laughs) I was dumb. I went, I was so dumb when I was young. Like, I just pulled up to this dude's yard, not realizing like how bad he was. So did she get? I should not be this? alive right now. That's crazy. <laughs> did she get suited with this guy, or did she like somehow randomly? Oh, she married him. She married him, and then she ended up um trying to witness or being a witness against him. But and did she, she find him on her own, or was she like she set up with this guy? I don't know. I would like to know that. I don't know. Um, at all. I have no clue. I'm missing like ten years of her whole life. I know that she moved up to New York. That she was in Syracuse for a long time. I made contact with a couple guys she dated, but really a lot of her, she, I can't find hardly crap about her. And you found out about her through a dream you had? Yeah, I lived with, I mean, I, I spent time with her. You know, I live in the same town that she's from. She's buried right down the road from me and her mom's still alive. I take care of, you know, my biological grandma, which are the gardeners. I don't know if you know about them. So, Okay. okay. <laughs> Your 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 birth mother is deceased. Yes, she but died on my the birthday. the one that stabbed you in the chest, the adopted mother, she's alive. alive. Kathleen Griffith. What a name. Huh. Um. And that's not even talking about my stepmom. I'm gonna get to her one day because she stole millions from me. That's my money, and I'll get it eventually. But that's not the first. I don't care about the money. I just want my dad's stuff. Because, you know, I'm not trying to be mean, but I don't even have one thing that belonged to him. And the only photos I have are because of other soldiers and other family members that sent them to me. How have you avoided coming in contact with these three-letter agencies wondering why not. you're poking? Oh, I have not. Them. I've called them. I've been blatant in their face. I've oh, no, I know. But I meant like in a – like the other way around, like them coming to you and oh, saying, I've, hey. I've been targeted. I've had my okay. house broken into. I just have cameras everywhere. I actually carry a camera on me that I can turn on whenever I want to. But I live um, in North Carolina. It's a one-party state. So as long as I'm in the room, I can record, and I know the laws, and I, mm-hmm. I use them to weaponize against them. Way to do it. Accountability might feel like an attack, but it doesn't make it so. Absolutely. Everybody should be held accountable. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so were you involved with the remote viewing? I I don't I believe so, but I don't have a hundred percent proof of what they were testing me on. I know they were testing me on, but I don't know exactly. So I would like to to work with a hypnotherapist. I'm just really scared of giving someone access to my brain. I don't so you me. have a feeling you kind of have like men I'm in missing, black. I'm missing time. And the only reason I know what would happen is because I can read it in my journals. But there are times, there's gaps that I don't remember at all. And I have active triggers that I can't explain. And I have a great therapist. I'm really lucky that I have a therapist that researched this stuff before just diagnosing me. That was, you know, and I've had her for a couple of years now, but she actually had to get a therapist after talking to me, and I felt really bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you made the therapist get a therapist. Congratulations. But I appreciated the fact that she didn't just give up and just be like, oh, my God, this is above my pay grade, that she, you know, looked at it through, it, you know, a traumatized sense of, you know, she took control of what she could and tried to help me gain control of what I couldn't. Does that make sense? Because I can't control every aspect of my life, but I shouldn't let fear um, control me, if that makes sense. And that's what I have done for the longest time. That's really awesome that somebody of that caliber is not completely shut off to this information immediately. It's the first doctor I've ever had that didn't throw pills at me. I'm really thankful for that. Right. Oh, most of them probably just thought you were schizo. And honestly, I can't blame them. I mean, it's a really crazy story. And I didn't just know all this stuff. I always knew I was adopted. Like, the way I explain it is just dumping a bunch of puzzles, you know, upside down on the floor and then having to sift through it and figure out what fits and what doesn't. It's taxing on your psyche. It really is. And I'm not going to lie. There's been years where I've had to put it in my back pocket and just be present just because I didn't have the emotional capacity to dig at that point in time and process everything while I was going through it. So how were you privy to 
so much of the military information. You said you were just listening, you know, a good listener, and you'd kind of be in a fly on the wall kind of deal. Yeah, honestly, I started just shits and giggles. I was on CIA.gov just researching stuff um, because I was on TikTok. And I I knew my dad was a Green Beret. I knew my grandpa was Green Beret. I did not know that my grandma worked for the CIA. So I was just in there typing family members' names, and I typed in my grandma's name, and that shit popped up. So I called her. And, you know, and she, you know, I'm, she's like in her 70s. She's a little old. And she's upset. She's like, what do you mean you can Google me and you can pull up this information? She's like, how many showing up? And at that point in time, there's only three of them, Grill Flame, Stargate, and Sun Street. And, you know, she's like, is anyone else, is anything else pulling up? And I'm like, no, nothing else is pulling up. So she was freaking out. Like, how can she delete Google or how can she get her name and information off there? And I'm having to explain to her, like, once it's on the Internet, it's on there yeah. forever. You know, is there mm-hmm. any other projects that you were involved in that you want to talk about now before it gets there? And she freaked out. She hung up on me. Wow. Damn. So what were the three projects you worked on? What she what are on each what of them about? are each of them about? Um, Grill Flame was just, you know, psychic remote viewing. Stargate, which is just like the umbrella term for all of it, um, which was, you know, astral travel, um, different projects. They, they did a lot of testing just to see if real the 70s was more you know trial and error collecting data seeing you know what they could get collectively in a controlled environment it started at fort Meade, and then it went to for a little bit it was at fort bragg um it was at what's that place called um it's in texas i can't think of the name for the life of me right now but I, I can tell you in a few minutes, my brain just likes the, eh. and then it went to Fort Bragg. A lot of this all ties back to Fort Bragg, PSI, UFOs, all of it goes right back there. Uh-huh. <laughs> I hope they know I'm not worried. And the only reason why I'm filtering this stuff is just because I'm not trying to ruin lives. They could have paid me off. They could have made my life a lot easier. They could have shut me up a long time ago. They chose not to. So like, if they're listening to me, you know, my life didn't have to go this hour. Loose leak lips sink ships. So, yep. you know, I'm just putting it out there. You want to shut me up? Fix my life, bro. Yeah. Or at least give me some justice. That'd be a nice place to start. So we were at the- I called the FBI in 2020. I called them. And they, I have emails and voice recordings, uh, you know, of them leaving me voicemails. And they were all willing to help me until they looked into my adoption which I know the adoption agency out of Lillington, North Carolina, doesn't exist. The only documented proof uh, I have that I was adopted is a photocopy out of Lillington that they sent the records to the vital records in Raleigh, which is where all sealed documents go. Nobody else is supposed to have access to that without a court order. So the fact that that's not there, that's an open and shut case. I would say so. Wow. Uh, oh, man. So you were talking about these projects um could you elaborate on the travel aspect of it that you mentioned there's tunnels they use tunnel systems and i've mapped out fort bragg and i've mapped out right pat because those are the ones i know um but i'm working with other people that know other bases and our my goal is to try and map out every state that we have in the u.s these are the deep underground military base tunnels. Yes, because and- like a lot of people don't realize that, you know, they, there's a whole underground base at Fort Bragg. Like a lot of people know about the 103rd group, but a lot of people don't know about the one behind um, Fort Bragg in between like Vass and Southern Pines and the Rockefeller estate on the corner of Highway 87 and Nursery Road. It's called Overhills. There's a stoplight there because I crashed in the fence. That's why the pole on the left side is bigger than the one on the right. If you go straight down that dirt road, that takes you to the Rockefeller estate. Well, Ooh. well, well. Now we're getting somewhere. I'm sure, it's just it's <laughs> which I grew up. It's called <laughs> Orioles, right? And they don't teach you any of this stuff in your history book, even though the high school's named after it and the roads are named after it. They don't tell you. Wow. Um. So you believe that you were trafficked in these tunnels do you have any recollection of that i do but i don't want to talk about that in a recorded space not trying to be rude but i fair enough no okay i'm okay fair enough um just trying to gauge i'm okay with talking about what the type what they did i'm okay with talking about the torture tactics they use just not recorded just okay let's let's kind of go into that a little bit if you want i remember being strapped to a chair 
I remember going to the doctors, and this all happened at Wright Pat because I had Tricare. All my doctors were through the military. So all of it's documented. They just refuse to give me access to that. So I'm in a battle with that currently of getting my own medical records. So when those are finally released to me, I'll at least have doctors' names other than my scribble scrabble for my journal, which is atrocious. But I remember like um, going into the doctor, then giving me medicine, and then like I would wake up in my mom's car, or sometimes I would wake up at home in my bed, and hours would have passed, like and no recollection of anything that would happen. But like. I would be angry for days after and like that's when the, she started drugging me she would give me more pills and more pills and like whenever I'd go to my dad's they would stop giving me the pills because you know they're like she doesn't need them she doesn't need them at all and that's when I would tell him what was going on the abuse that was happening and so she took him to court to force him to give me the pills and my dad spent thousands of dollars in and out of the court system trying to to fight for me and I appreciated that um, but he lost he lost. My adopted mom has a lot of money, and unfortunately, uh, money talks. So, I mean, my dad did everything he could, but until she put that butcher knife to my chest and tried to write her rights away to another state, saying that she didn't know where my father was, that he had abandoned me, she tried to completely write me away to Ohio. And I don't know how all of it transpired, but my father somehow got word and um, came back from Africa and was at the court date and they gave him custody of me. It all happened so fast. But like in my head, it was just like, you know, he was just this hero that came out of nowhere and just saved the day because like, I mean, I didn't know what was going on. I I know it was locked in a, a, a building. It was underground. There was a tiny little sliver of a window, but the the window was at like ground level half of it was you know above it like i don't even know where i was located at it was kind of like a jail you were being tested on or are we talking like yes. physical, physical abuse? abuse both sexual as well not to my knowledge i don't okay. know um i don't believe i didn't so want to bring, bring that up but i just no, wanted to i don't kinda... know though um i don't know i know that my adopted mother um did have a test done before my adopted dad got custody of me, she said that I didn't have it intact, my hymen, um, mm. but I had no memory or anything. So in my head, I was still a virgin, but I, I don't have any memories <sighs> or any memories. Man. So do you think. But that should all be on my medical records. Do you think that they had a goal behind doing all this testing or was it just some do, sort of sadistic? Because, like, this is where it sounds crazy, but I feel like. And, I'm just going to say because it, it does sound crazy, but I feel like I can manifest certain outcomes with just my head. I feel like I, I have that ability, and that sounds absolutely outright insane out loud, but I, I feel like they've known that since I was a little girl. That doesn't sound insane here. No. It sounds crazy when I say it out loud. It really does, um, except for the people that are around me. You know, They've kind of seen I, – I post on TikTok and Facebook forever, so like my Facebook page, you can kind of go and see – this stuff unfolding. I, I have dreams and I'll post it and then a couple months down the road they come true and so it's kind of nice when you have people that have been on there for years, over a decade, you know watch this stuff happen as it goes. Do you think they were exploiting your abilities? I do. I think they were honestly either that or they were trying to squash them. You know what I mean? Because like when I say the amount of drugs that they had me on seven to eight pills at a time mm. from five to eleven, there's no logical explanation to give to give a child that that type of there's there's none and like and i have adults in my life that the way they described me as a child was zombie like obedient like a robot like a dog i didn't think cognitively and i don't remember cognitively being aware to like my mid-20s like as a mom already like with my second kid like i like trying to view it as like i was an autopilot i have something similar to that Oh, and then just my like children's progression. father is seven years older than me, and I didn't understand that whole, you know, grooming tactic. So I just got all of this abuse, and, you know, I thought our relationship was great, and not realizing, you know, like, what you have to deal with when you get, when you fall in love with an alcoholic. I put that man into rehab twice. He was extremely violent, and, you know, like, I was raised not to quit, so I put up with abuse. You know, I threw hands because, you know, I'm a fighter, but, like, I mean, he hit me in the head with a vacuum cleaner. He used to throw plates at my face with, like, Frisbees. And the cops would come, and they would arrest him. And, you know, like, 
I always associated him like as Jekyll and Hyde. When he would drink, he would turn into this monster. And like he had these abilities and I believed him. Like he would see things on people's shoulders. Like and I called him demons because I thought that's what it was, but he would freak out and I I couldn't get him calmed down. Like one time I ran into the room because he was screaming at the top of his lungs and I came in there, he was literally hanging on the ceiling fan with his hands screaming, they're trying to get me, they're trying to get me. And I thought he was having psychosis or, you know, it's the alcohol or you know, I would fight people like, Hey, stop giving him alcohol. You know, he can't drink, he's gonna get you know, like I didn't, mm -hmm. I could, at the end of the day, I couldn't save him. I couldn't get him to stop drinking. And here I am three kids later looking at my life, realizing like, if I don't get out, like my kids are going to start acting this way. So I literally left. This is Phoenix, Arizona. I had a baby strapped to my chest and I had two of the little monkey leashes, you know, on my bait, my other, my two year old and my four year old. And I left from Phoenix, Arizona back to North Carolina and I never went back. He followed me. Um, tried to get back with me, but I had to get another restraining order on him. And once he realized that I wasn't going to get back with him, he just left and went to Florida. And I haven't seen him since. He doesn't pay child support, hasn't seen his kids. He messages them every once in a while just to say that I'm a bitter baby mama. Even though he doesn't have to pay child support or any of that stuff, I told him, you know, hey, you have cirrhosis of the liver. You need to get yourself in check. You know, you need to be, at least be alive for your kids. Go ahead and fix your addiction. And then then go have a relationship with your sons. But unfortunately, he just, he couldn't face that, that battle. Wow. It was sad because, you know, alcoholism, it's, it's, it's really hard to watch. Yeah, it's a From the outside thing. in. For sure. So. But yeah. I felt like he was dealing with spiritual stuff himself. And that's the reason why he drank was to avoid it. Yeah, if I've ever been face to face with the devil, it's dealing with people who have an alcohol problem it's, it's i feel like it's it's no around no. them i feel like they're at a lower vibration and i don't feel like they are aware of it and i don't mean to be like a, a brat but when i get around people like that it gives me anxiety or I, I feel really shaky and like i just want my impulse is to run i just dead ass want to run the opposite direction the hell away from everyone understandable I don't, blame you. I don't drink at all. I, I smoke weed. That's my thing. But I, I refuse to drink. And I thank him for the, that experience because having to deal with an alcoholic at such a young age um, really woke me up to what I did not want to be. Right. Sheesh. T Ted, were you going to ask her about her something else too? Yeah, I was just going to say, can you – so – you were saying how your mom was a product of MK Ultra. Can you explain more about how you know that and what you found out about that and, about that and how that relates well, to, you to you also? Well, she wrote her book before she passed, and she also did the 23andMe DNA test, so I would at least have a fighting chance. So a lot of I, what I have, I didn't learn till after she passed. Um, I, I Not because I didn't try, because, man, we got in a few fights over this just because she would shut down. And I didn't understand. Um, honestly, I was kind of mean to her, if I'm going to be real. I, I was very upset with her because how can you go fight grown-ass men and you have the balls to say things to anybody, but you can't face these people that took your baby. You can't face these people that abused you. Like, I, I resented her because I'm like, here I am, a teenager, and I'm doing this shit. You're a grown-ass woman. Why can't you? Not realizing, you know, she was, a, she was the same age that I am now when I found her. And looking at that from this the, the lens of my mentality, like my expectations were for her were way too high. And coming from trauma myself, like I I owe her an apology. And I know she wouldn't take it because I knew I knew she understood. She could have just told me the truth, um, but she wanted to give me some sense of normalcy. So she she ate it and she let me think whatever I thought. Just I guess out of the genuine goodness of her heart, like. I don't even know everything she went through. I just know that she was scared of people. She barely ever left her house. She was scared of pictures. She did not want her photo taken. She didn't want it posted on social media. Um, anytime I would post photos on my Facebook, I had to make it private. I found her Twitter account too, but I'm trying to find a hacker. Or, you know, I messaged X too to try and see if they can give me access to it. So I would like to know the people that she's following and the ones that she was you know, trying to get in contact with. Because I know she was trying to get justice for me. I know the woman, um, I don't know how she was involved with me being taken, but her name was Gloria. 
See, there's so many questions I have. I just didn't ask them when she was alive, and I wish I would have. She was just so scared, and I just I didn't know what the scare if if the fear was because she had exposed you know the Barefoots. That's her last name, you know, because she had witnessed against them, or if it was something else later on in you know New York when she was living in Syracuse. Like her whole life is a mystery to me. So well, who were the Barefoots and what she witnessed like, against she, them? So now? the Barefoots, that's the family that she had married into to keep me. And the father, I think his name was Rayvon Barefoot Sr. He was the leader of a KKK out here, and he was a big drug dealer. Like, he was a drug trafficker. I have met his daughters. Um, her, his one daughter's name is Trina. She told me that, and this is crazy because I'm telling, man, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'm sorry for doxing you, but she told me that her father, um, she got raped. She was assaulted. And her father gave her a gun and told her not to come home until that guy was unalived. And she came home the first time and he wasn't. And he made her go back out and she, until she did it. And then mm. he went out and he disposed of the bodies. And they they showed me. They pointed the road where they buried them. And I have never told a soul. I've never even gone back down in that town. And that's in Linden, North Carolina. I'm just going to tell the truth. I might as well tell it all. Probably going to be getting some phone calls after. <laughs> Honestly, I don't care, though. I gave them 36 years to say something or do something or at least help. And all they care about is their own image. I'm 36. I'm OK. How many other babies, though, are going through this currently? There's a yeah, lot of kids yeah. that go missing on a daily basis. So I can't shut up. Even mm. if I'm scared, I, I won't. Very good point. And so what what what's your main goal that you're going to that you're trying to accomplish on your mission right now? So I would like to get my day in court. Um, so my first goal is to sue the state of North Carolina for my sealed adoption file missing. Then I would like to sue my adopted mother for torture and abuse. Um, after that, I'm going to steal a steal. <laughs> then I'm going to sue my uh, stepmother for robbing me um, and committing forgery and fraud. And then I would like to sue the state of oh, Fort Bragg and Wright-Patterson Air Force Base for war crimes against humanity and torturing children without consent because they didn't have my consent and so are you trying to gather the evidence now or what no. kind of evidence do you already i've been gathering evidence um my entire adult life and i have been talking to other individuals and getting their sides and i have recorded their conversations i don't know if it's legal or not but i knew that words you know the voice mattered more than just word of mouth so third party didn't count as, as long as i had the evidence you know they could figure out their backtracking later on but i actually have you know video recordings of my stepmother's siblings admitting that they helped her burn the wills when my father passed to rob me they are willing to testify on behalf uh to help me i also have a couple active duties well one of them's a contractor i don't know exactly what he does other than he works from embassy to embassy but he's been retired since like the 2000s so i don't know exactly what he does but he is willing to speak about everything that he witnessed and this is my neighbor that grew up across the street from me my whole life he's who i lived with whenever my dad would deploy so um he knows everything and he also worked with my dad. He was seventh group. So he's willing to go and testify once I'm in a courtroom setting. But I cannot say his name or anything beforehand just because it would jeopardize his career. Understood. And so what's stopping you from going forward with these lawsuits? Mainly it's money. A lot of these attorneys are wanting a ridiculous amount of cash up front. So I've been practicing with suing people myself. Um, I've been sued twice for 10 grand and I represented myself, but I won both times. So I'm really just trying to study the laws mentally and emotionally appear, um, prepare for the backlash. Because I know once I get into a courtroom, it's going to be brutal. And so I'm going to mm -hmm. have to um, control my emotions and my thyroid because, you know, I have to, to deal with overactive adrenals because of the prolonged abuse of trauma so i get jumbled up really quick so talking you know talking on these podcasts talking on twitter and tiktok is practice for me do you have faith in the justice oh, system oh absolutely not okay <laughs> no, <laughs> but not in the justice system that turned around quickly <laughs> <laughs> maybe took on air on that one so Screw them. Absolutely. Get, get get it all out. Go everywhere you can. Tell your story and get. There's gonna be people. 
I just wish I would have done this sooner, and I would have had a way better case had I done so. But I just wasn't. My head wasn't there yet. The time I just don't know if there is such thing. The time that you did it was the right time. Everything happens for a reason. When it happened, Mm -hmm. it's happening. I appreciate that. Who knows? Maybe, maybe out of the people who listen to this podcast, one of them's a lawyer or knows a lawyer that will want to help you out. You never know. Yep. Just keep doing what you're doing. Somebody will hear it. It will work out if you keep doing what you're doing. Yep. I just would love if anyone is listening to this that lives in Ohio, and if you see Kathleen Griffith, you know, for one, boycott Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Don't don't eat their food. That's the family <laughs> restaurant. Don't give them a dime of your damn Wait, money. Wait, what? what? Yes. That's my family's restaurant. Don't 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 eat there. Are you serious? That's my adopted mother's side. Yeah, the Griffiths. That's their that's their restaurant. That's like I'm not gonna dox myself. <laughs> that's <laughs> close. <by. laughs> I love that's their extremely, food. Extremely that is extremely close to me. Bill's like, no, <laughs> not so yeah, good. Like, actually, I think I still have some in my teeth. <laughs> it's so like good. The northern version yeah, of I was gonna say, what kind of experience you have with the, that restaurant, Bill? Excellent. <laughs> I know the recipes. <laughs> there you go. Wow. <laughs> okay. That was kind of weird. It always comes back to food. So, the, the, Man, they're, yeah, so they're not true. just they're not just a Florida thing, then. Oh no! It originated in Ohio. Interesting. Hmm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Um, so, yeah, what like what Ted was saying, there. I don't think there's any ever been a better time to tell your story than now. People's... That's why I'm actually in the process of trying to get FOIA requests. Like, if I can get all this stuff, you know, released to me because they're my family, that would help out tremendously. You know, there's actually someone who I know who's a very good researcher and very good at finding things, and I'm going to connect you with her after this, and she may be able to help you. I'd appreciate that. I've made some connections on TikTok, um, some really – I wrote elbows with some really big people. It's just – then they want me to go on their podcast, but honestly, this is the first podcast I've gone on. So, like, I'm just, like, nervous other than Penny's, but that's just because I find no Penny. I met Penny a decade ago on Facebook and a targeted individuals group and you know like everyone thought she was crazy and like i love penny you know she, everyone thinks that the stuff that's coming out of her mouth is just ridiculous who is it who is this penny shepherd she runs awake nation podcast tv okay okay i'm part of the trauma triage which is yeah. just like a group of individuals where um just people come on there and tell their story and we just give them advice with just different coping you know strategies just ways to stay, you know, present because sometimes you get stuck in a loop. I know that's something I deal with. Like, um, my bounce back rate is slow as fuck. Someone can trigger me and that feeling will last sometimes for hours, sometimes days. And I have to, like, re- completely reset myself. So um, it's kind of therapeutic to go and talk to other people about other people's problems rather than just sticking to myself because, you know, it kind of feels selfish after a while. <laughs> Yeah, it's always a good idea to come on our podcast for that way you know that like no one's really ever going to listen to what you said on here and it'll <laughs> warm up. <laughs> oh, they He's listen. Kidding. He's they kidding. do listen. I'm out here planting seeds, and, you know, and we love and all of our ripples. listeners. And those ripples turn all into waves, and the people in the boat aren't going to like it that well. But you remember, you can swim. A boat anyway. All right. Good be quiet. <laughs> It's so it's so strange. I have it's no so clue strange. what's doing. It is. But whatever. It's not a huge deal. Death needs to do some fucking work. It's okay. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like oh uh, yeah. <laughs> he he wanted to say something smart, but he I held know. back. <laughs> it's cool, man. I can handle it. I promise. So I like the work. I know you do. So I don't even remember where we were now. My fucking mind is Let's... blown. I'm, I'm, I I just want to know, can you, do you have any of these abilities still? Can you tap into that? Or is that something like it's a. I can. Um, I don't really have a lot of control. Mine works more towards people. So that's what I focus on is I'm trying to locate missing children. So um, 
I just do that for fun. I've worked with authorities. I've actually found three missing people so far, but they were not alive. Um, the only person that I found that was alive was this past March, and that was the 13-year-old. And you've done this through telepathy? Um, yes, that remote viewing, um, speaking to spirits. It sounds crazy, but sometimes it comes in words. Sometimes it comes in picture form. I just write it all down, and then I contact the um, whoever the detective is that's working the case, and I tell them, like, hey, I know this sounds crazy, but this is what I got. And, you know, um, it sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. Do they actually that's amazing. listen to you? But Harnett County Police, I will say. Listen to you? Oh, yeah. Harnett County, um, that's usually the county that I work with. They've been very respectful. And actually, I had um, the one sheriff th thanked me. He called me back and he's like, you don't know me and you don't know this girl because I was only helping because it was a, a friend of mine that I had gone to school with. Her sister-in-law had gone missing. Um, and it ended up that she was stabbed brutally and wrapped in a rug and left her in the mud um, for dead mm. out in rural not Chatham, this was um, Lumberton, North Carolina. And not knowing what I had known, I had given him literally the entire weekend of different places that she'd gone through. Cause there was a name, a man named John came through. And like, I had given him all this stuff and he's like, yeah, that's where she was on Friday. And then you didn't know this, but Saturday she was over here. And like, it was, I didn't know any of the stuff if it would, he would be able to put it together, but he was able to, it made sense to him. And they were able to find her body, and she was face down in the mud, like I said. I just did not see the stab wounds. I knew it was brutal. I knew it was bloody. I just I didn't know all the details. And so are you, like, so are you playing this in some way, or, are, or is it something that just happened to you? Oh, sorry. I broke up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it did break up. Say it again. Oh, I was saying, so are you, like, channeling this, or is it something that just comes to you, these visions? Um, Both. Sometimes I try to uh get myself into the state and see if i can it's 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 hit or miss sometimes it'll just come to me when i don't want it to sometimes it's like really pushy um and other times i kind of have to really work on it and uh tone in but i'm still practicing i don't have complete ability i don't, I don't have complete control over it yet it kind of rules my life but when i'm able to, to tune in it's very um it's very powerful i will say that it's I, I can't focus on anything else other than that until I get it done. Is this a, like a different plane of thinking? Like it takes you there? Does it? How, how does it manifest itself to you? The way I describe it is like a smell. It's like a sense. It's not like something outside huh. of me. It's like an internal. Dude, it's crazy. And it's crazy that you said manifest too, Bill, because it, I don't know if any of you have seen that show before. Oh, that's a good show. Yeah. Dude, oh, it, manifest, yes. it kind of like reminds me of it where they get the callings to like come to them and they end up like. And it safe. reminds me of that because that whole flight that went missing too. I feel like that was like a slap in the face with just real shit. Yes. And I don't think you it's know, just like Stranger that. Things. Stranger Things is not just about one girl. It's about multiple children that just put all the stories together to make it more, you know, enjoyable. But it's based on true stories, plural. Mm hmm. That's right. how they always do it. Oh man, this is wild. I'm not the only people. On, I'm not the only person on this app that has experience with Wright Patterson Air Force Base. I've actually found a, a few, quite a few other individuals um, with similar stories. So delve down into Wright Patterson. Down to describing the room identically to the red and the blue and the yellow on the walls. Like when I say, I, I don't remember what that one girl's name was, but I was in a space with signs. That's whose room I was in. And this girl was talking about her story. And it was it was crazy because she was literally describing the same place that I had been as a little girl. So tell us about that more. Tell us about the yes. Wright Patterson. Um, Wright Patterson. So they have tunnels underneath Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Everyone always talks about Hangar 18, but nobody talks about Hangar 13. Um, there are tunnels that go under Wright Pat that connect to Wright University up to Ohio State University, and, and then they connect to the Adena. There are tr there are tunnels, natural cave systems that the, the Native Americans used to use, the, the Adena tribe. And the, there's another tribe. I don't know the name. Sorry, I'm driving if it gets loud. Car sounds good. <laughs> okay, I'm just making sure. <laughs> I'm on my way to pick up my son from work. <laughs> Death. 
That's it's a, it but, yeah, sounds so good. It's a good sounding exhaust. What do you want me to say? <laughs> Thank you. I got a lead foot. I drive a little fast. So you're going to tell us what you're driving? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> That's no. It's like I can't make it any easier for them to make find me. <laughs> What's the license plate number? They already know the state I live in, and I use my real government name, so I'm pretty sure they can find my address. But I'm also pretty sure they know the amount of pew pews I have and the cameras that I have is extensive. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that they're dumb, knowing that my dad was a Green Beret, and I've been shooting since I was four years old. Wow. So now we figured out why they what? haven't come for you yet. So I'm not trying to sound cocky, <laughs> but I tell them, I challenge them, hit me with your best shot. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> and I don't think they will, though, because they know I have uh, I have very intricate contingency plans, multiple set in place. If and when I pass, the T is going to spread. It is going. I, I'm telling the truth on everybody. Everybody that cheated on their husbands, everybody cheated on their wives, all the tea is coming out, every single bit of it. So to to kind of switch it up a little bit and go back to the Stargate thing, because obviously the commercialized, you know, description of Stargate would be the big circle with this liquid and people are walking through it and they're, you know, time traveling and whatnot or going to different places. those are real, yes. They are that's real. Not like, yes, those are real, but that's not what the project originally started from. It did later on incorporate that, but that's not what they originally were trying to do. How could, can you back that up? There is there a way that you, did you see this visibly? I, well, I don't know if my brain's playing tricks on me or not. Does that make sense? Because like, I've yes, so much course. trauma. So like when I explain things, I don't usually talk about it unless I have 100% proof. So, like, I have memories that I would think, yes, but I don't 100% know for sure. Well, feel free did, to speculate and <laughs> tell what you think here. We're not, we're not did trying your to prove father I would love right. to, but at the same time, I don't want people to be like, oh, this girl's that shit crazy, uh, blah, 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 blah. So besides, because you know, it kind of takes away from the real story. <laughs> do you know what podcast you're on? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Did your dad ever describe things to you, even though he wasn't supposed to? Um, yeah, the Kandahar Giant. So my dad got drunk. Um, and this is here we go. Here we go. 2004. Um, so my dad almost died in Afghanistan on that tour. So a rock saved him. That's all I know is um, a kid was shooting at him, and he was ducking behind rocks, and he actually carried this rock in his pocket everywhere he went. But um, he got drunk because my aunt had died, and he was not allowed to go to the funeral because my stepmom. Um, I don't know why, but he had completely stopped talking to everybody in his family after he lost custody of me. Um, I don't remember everything, but I remember when my dad tried to took me to the airport. I was three years old. I remember being at the airport. I remember my mom worked there. I remember they recognized me, and then I remember sitting down. And then next thing I knew, both of my grandfathers were at the airport with my adopted mom. So my adopted father, like... He he didn't trust his father because why was my grandfather in America when he went AWOL and moved to Mexico? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It made no sense for him to even be in the country, let alone the state. So my uncle and I feel like my my grandfather sold my, my dad out. And so I feel like my dad had a personal vendetta to try and expose these things in as safe a way as he could. And like, I resented my dad because like, why did I have to do PT every morning before school? Why did he tie me up with ropes and stuff? Um, and I had to let myself get myself out before I was allowed to go play. Like everything was a lesson with him. Everything was training. He taught, he raised me like I was one of his soldiers. And I, re- I resented the shit out of it. I rebelled because, you know, I'm not one of your soldiers. I'm your daughter, you know, and you can go all the way around the world and save all these damn strangers, but you can't save me in your own damn backyard. And maybe I was a little too brutal or a little too mean to him, but like, I just, I, at that point in time, I didn't respect him because how can you do all these things and, and not have the, you know, you preach all these, you preach all this stuff about doing the right thing, speaking the truth, but you're living a lie. You know what I mean? So like when he got drunk that night, he told me about um, the 13 foot tall giants, you know, that he had fought. 
that it had red hair, it had two rows of teeth, that the first team that went there, all of them died. They were transporting something. Um, they were going across some mountains and there was a cave system that they were told that they were not supposed to go to in the first place, but whoever was leading that team didn't listen and did it anyway. So they were strict. There was three Green Berets, my dad, and then four other Delta Force agents. Um, they And then two translators that were a part of this recon team. So they went to go and get what they were transporting. That was their only entire, entire mission was to get that. Um, the one guy, his name is John. I'm not going to say his last name because I don't want to get in trouble because I'm still friends with his wife on Facebook. But he was speared to death. He died instantly. My dad, like, it, he, that fucked with his head. Whatever else happened on that mission, like when my dad came back from that deployment, they put him in a facility for a couple of months. I wasn't able to see him. Whoa. So I don't know exactly where he was, but I was assuming it was just trying to get his head right. Whoa. So this was in Afghanistan, you said? Yeah, because we didn't, we went for weapons, but not weapons of mass destruction like you think and like I think, like they were <laughs> trying to portray. <laughs> we went to go find Gilgamesh, to go find Mesopotamia. Yes. We were stealing ancient technology the reason why we were there is because of you know what we had found in africa and that's the reason why we were over there now in palestine and israel it's the same story unfolding mm -hmm. just at a larger scale and we are stealing technology mm -hmm. and so do you think that these stargates are like attached to the specific location i think that so they tied to cern i think cern plays a big part of this and i feel like the reason this is my personal opinion but I feel like the reason why we keep getting these resets, these mandala effects, is because they keep trying to change the inevitable outcome, and they're not able to change it. They don't like the ending that they're going to get. So they keep trying to do all these loops over and over and over again for a different result, and they're not going to get that. They know they're not going to win. They just don't take defeat very easy. Oh, so what you're saying is they've already seen what happens in the future. Correct. And I don't think they like the outcome. I agree with that. These are the people that are running the show, basically. And that's why, I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I have memories that, on top of memories, that they're conflicting. Certain things are not the right words, they're not the right things, you know, and they call them mandala effects, but I remember it differently. <laughs> so either I'm crazy and everybody else is, or this is this stuff's real. Us all mm -hmm. do, definitely. And oh, the yeah, good no, thing about right having there. journals and writing things down every day is you're able to see patterns and you're able to see, you know, like shifts. Well, that's interesting with the whole CERN thing, and they they can't fix what they're trying to fix. And, you know, that goes, and it goes along with that saying that we hear a lot lately, that no one can stop what is coming. Uh-huh. This is unsettling that this makes so much sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It's really, I mean, it's scary, but at the same time, it's not. Because when you realize what they have been studying to weaponize, you can also realize that you can counteract these. Everything moves the frequency. Everything admits electromagnetic field. They have weaponized that. So when mm -hmm. they are weaponizing these frequencies, can't you hypothetically counteract those using different frequencies? Yeah. Can't you do this on a larger scale? Like I, my, my recent like rabbit hole that I have been studying is telepathic hypnosis. And that's something the CIA has been studying for the past 47 years. Do you think that's something that like 5G is all about? or? I think that that's a way to flip. I, I agree with the whole flipping of a switch. Um, I just think it's different than a lot of people. I think we're dealing with radiation poisoning right now. I think a lot Big of people time. are sick um, and they're not realizing where it's coming from. It was strategically planned. And I posted the patents. I posted the, you know, scientific data describing this because, like, a lot of people, like, here I'll just go ahead and say it. Everyone's arguing: is the earth is the earth flat or is the earth round? I prefer the term parallel earth because that's what they've been studying. The CIA um, think that they that both of globies and flippers are both correct. Um, the way I view it is kind of like a cross. It's intersecting and parallel at the same time. Um, all these, it's it's. They intersect, if that makes sense. Everything is parallel and interdimensional. Can you elaborate on that a little more? Realities are dimensions, but I feel like they've tried to merge them. 
Hmm. Like planes of existence. Yes. Like there's another you running around in a different mirror universe, like ours, but different. And hypothetically, you could call energy from your other self um, to yourself now, saying like you're going through something and, you know, you need a little extra jump. Hypothetically, you could siphon energy from your other self. Or Would that be like you could... the maybe a higher plane self or a lower plane self? Like higher levels of consciousness. Yeah, but I think it's both. I think it's it's multidimensional. It's and not just like to be like that's actually you, or is it your soul? Because you know, I think our soul is infinite. I don't think that you know, like our soul is separate from our physical bodies. Mm -hmm. So I think it can be. I wouldn't. I think you can be in more than one place at the same time. And I know that sounds crazy out loud, but I think that you physically can't, but your spirit can. Yeah, I mean, because if there's parallel universes and there's another you, that would mean that... So, like, I wouldn't that kind of, like, make sense will. to why you have memories that don't match up with your memories? Yeah, it would. You could say so. But and it's... certain areas, you know, certain places have high electromagnetic fields. Like, if you think about, like, I look at it from, like, a paranormal, you know, investigative point of view. When I'm going into a location, like, I live right down the road from the Bentonville battlefield. So I go there often. I, do, I paranormal investigate. And I also, um, I'm working with the historical society out here to um, map out unmarked graves because um, our water level is really high. And, like, they're, it's, it's sinking. Everything is sinking. So we have a lot of, you know, graves out here that are, are not even marked. So we just go out there and we ping them and then they send their people out here and, and investigate. But whenever I'm doing like, you know, the paranormal aspect of it, you always want to get a base reading for your environment because a lot of this stuff can be, you know, brushed off as being electrical or, you know, you can, you can find it, you can debunk it very easily. There's always, you know, you, nine out of 10 times is a logical explanation for what's going around you. And then you have that 1% that's like, oh, maybe something hap else is happening here. And, you know, and that's when you take these technology and, you you know, you, you, you try to investigate it and try to get, you know, data because most people aren't going to believe you word of mouth. You have to have some type of proof. People, you know, they want evidence. So, like, when you go to these locations and you get a spike in your electromagnetic field, you know, that originally you didn't have that level there. And you go ahead and you mark it, you know, you go ahead and turn your EVP recorder on. Sometimes you'll get things or, you know, thermal imaging cameras. I, I use all of them at the same time just because I want to get, you know, different data from different sources just to collaborate with what I'm experiencing. Wow, it sounds like you're a pretty busy lady. Um, I am. <laughs> do, these, uh, do these machines or do the paranormal entities put out like a specific frequency or... It, it varies, but I've gotten my first and last name on EVPs before. They're very, they're very intelligent. Not all of them, but uh, some of them want to be heard. Some of them want to be seen. Are they all demonic? I don't think so. I used to think so. And I'm only saying that now because I, I was very scared of this. And this is maybe like the past 10 years that I've shifted my pers you know perspective on this. But I always associated all of them as evil just because I was scared. Just because I didn't understand and I didn't want to understand, I, I shut it off because I didn't. I didn't. I wanted to be normal, you know. Um, but looking back and now taking that fear aspect of it, I don't think they're all evil. I do think there is evil out there, and I do think that it's very um, tricky. That it'll it'll play nice, but you have to use your discernment, trust your gut, and I and I wholeheartedly mean that as literally as as I can. Trust your gut instinct. You feel that little pit in your, the, you know, that feeling in the pit of your stomach. People oh, can yeah. call it intuition, you can call it whatever. Trust it. It's not lying to you. Mm -hmm. You got to understand more than you understand. Don't go outsourcing your information. You need to insource. I like that. I like that. You know, the reason why I was asking if they're all demonic is just like, it's hard for me. And the experiences I've had, they haven't been good. It's hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that someone may just be there that's not stuck there you I mean, know what i mean they're tricking me that's possible i mean they could right. very well be you know that's I, i've dealt with this for a very long time so maybe maybe they're tricking me i i honestly don't know but i've 
I've had positive stuff come out of interacting with him, and but not all the time. I have been scared before. I've been scratched, but I also try to protect myself, and I try to stay away from areas that I feel uncomfortable, and I set boundaries. Before I even decide to engage, I let, I let it be known verbally and vocally out loud what I'm willing to in, you know, engage with and what I'm not. And I set those firm boundaries in place because I feel like your mind, you, you have more power than you think of. And, you know, your words hold power. And when you say certain things, like, I feel like I stunted my growth for years just because I, my mentality was always, I'm one person. What can I do? You know, how am I going to bring this stuff out? And I feel like I was hindering my growth just because I was actively saying this stuff over and over and over again. And just in the past couple of years of working with my therapist, you know, changing those statements to I can and, you know, trying to use positive affirmations. I have seen so many doors open up literally overnight that I, and it was kind of overwhelming. If I'm going to be honest, I had to take a step back. Cause I was like, Oh, whoa. I wanted the attention, but not that much. <laughs> <laughs> What'd your therapist tell you when you told him about the redheaded giant with two sets of teeth? Now I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie to you. She believes a lot of it. She's on the fence about some things, but she always gives me um, the safe space to talk about it. Um, I, she's never once called me a liar or made me feel inferior or like it wasn't safe to talk about it. Um, she just tries to bring the conversation back to something I can control presently. So I, I noticed that when I talk about certain things that she may be on the fence about, she always just redirects it to how, how does that make you feel? Or, you know, like, what did you gather from that or what can you what can you gain with that knowledge so she she always tries to flip it to a positive for me mm -hmm. yeah i would think that that's probably not the greatest business model to tell you you're crazy <laughs> no yeah. i mean she, she's so polite she really is honestly but i mean she's very honestly she's cut through she'll also tell me because i'm a petty person i really am i i have to fight really hard to keep my feelings in my pockets because i'm smart as fuck I take down internet trolls for fun. I do not like people that bully people or tell them to unalive themselves. I will find their house and I'll send it to them. I'll send their screenshots to their mama. I don't have any shame in my game. Do you have any spare time? Would you want to jump on Twitter at all? Or <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. I go on Twitter yeah, and TikTok. Yeah. I really we have a few. <laughs> you know, we could maybe rattle this couple of cages. I don't know. <laughs> oh, anybody that's telling someone to unalive themselves or, or targeting people for fun. They, everybody has skeletons in the closet. Just right. a lot of people, they don't, they lie to themselves. And then you deal with people like me. I'll tell on my damn self. There's absolutely nothing anyone can say about me that I won't say about me myself first. Because I'm not ashamed of my experiences. I look at them as lessons. Yeah, I fucked up. Yeah, I've hurt people. I've hurt people's feelings because I was hurting. You know, but when you take that power back and you're able to admit that you are not always in the right, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's healing. It's validating. Like, I'm not going to be the hero in everybody's story. Sometimes I'm the villain. So if you, you hear a good story, believe it. You hear a bad story, you believe it. I act accordingly. You know what I mean? And I, I just try to keep that transparency in every aspect of my life. I feel like it's easier to deal with because I don't, I can't keep up with the lies. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, we haven't had uh, very many people tell us that we should unalive ourselves at least well, I mean, there's been a couple. Oh, bro, I deal with but... that a lot. I deal with that a lot, <laughs> especially on TikTok. Um, it's not so bad anymore, but last year and the year before when I was trying to disco disclose all the Stargate stuff, you know, before it really got taken off, I was dealing with a lot of trolls, a lot of trolls, because a lot of people don't believe that my mom died on my birthday. And I'm like, who would lie? A crazy person would lie about something like that. But I've posted like my my birthday. I posted her tombstone. Like the dates match, bro. Like what? You know what I mean? Like I can I can literally post the non-disclosure agreements. I posted my entire family tree. Like I've posted like everything that I can. And and there's still people out there that don't want to believe it. And honestly, I'm not even mad at them. I kind of envy their mentality because I feel like that would be kind of like a safe safer world to be able to like walk through life without thinking these times these things are real. Like, I'm not mad at them for not believing me. I just wish they were kinder to people. If they could gain anything out of my story, it's just to, to just take a second step, you know, take a step back and just listen or research things first before you go off the wall saying things about other people because you don't know what type of burdens people carry. Just because they have a good customer service personality and they're, they're highly functioning doesn't mean that, you know, they're okay. 
a lot of the things that these things these people have said to me, if they would have said it to me in 2018, 2019, I'd have offed myself. You know, my mom died on my birthday. I was in a really bad place. But going through the isolation and going through the, you know, all of that, I, I woke up and I realized who I wanted to be around and who I didn't. And I learned to like myself. So I feel like sometimes we go through these dark parts in our life and it sucks, but I feel like it's necessary because it we're not going to be able to grow if we're still, you know, have one foot left in that bullshit. You have to take that step forward, even though it's scary. You know, you gotta, you have to figure out what you're doing with your life. If all I do is bring awareness to this bullshit, I will die happy. That's, that's really all I want is accountability more than anything. And for these babies, any of these kids that are going through this have a chance at a decent life. I don't care if they're illegal. I don't care what their story is. I just want them to have a chance because they deserve it. They're innocent in all of this. Amen to that. Amen to that. Yeah. Um, as far as the troll thing and everything, like, you know, we make jokes. We obviously deal with them quite a bit. And, uh, you know, you're right. They're so it's, easy uh... to deal with, though, because they have such high, like, egos, man. All you got to do is hit them below the belt a few times. And my favorite <laughs> go-to line is, if you want to steal it, you're more than welcome to. But this works wonderfully for me. But I'll be like, you're supposed to have more dick in your pants than your personality. You might want to work on that. But when I say it shuts <laughs> them up, it really does. It, it's... Oh, God. Yeah. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Take notes. I, take notes. Take notes. <laughs> I mean, Nobody I feel like it's better kit. coming Maybe from a female water, perspective. <laughs> so good. Maybe or my you favorite know. one is you keep talking shit. I'm going to go fuck your daddy and give him a kid he really loves. Oh, damn, dude. <laughs> wow. I can be mean, Matt. Just... <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> Spicy. That's how you handle trolls. Yeah. Did you... So did your dad ever mention anything else besides that drunk instance about the the giant or was there anything you else? Know, to... um, usually, uh, no, I, I'm not going to say he did because he was usually really, he kept his mask on in front of me. Right. All the other stories that I got was from my uncle or, or from battle buddies that they had told me. He kind of kept his face straight with me. I know he knew because like. After he got custody of me in 1999, he, he we weren't allowed to talk about any of this. And he should have put me in therapy. That's one thing I'm angry about him is he should have, the first thought should have put me into a therapist. But I understand why he didn't. Just because, like, what the fuck would I have told them? You know what I mean? At 12, 13 years old, there's no telling what I would have said. Plus, he's trained. He's trained, he's trained to he's compartmentalize. Trained to compartmentalize. <laughs> that, and I don't know if I try, because, okay, like, he was third group. And what I just told you this morning about that whole thing that's going on with third group this whole year with the trafficking ring, uh, was that a factor in, in how he died? You know, because my dad was ran off the road. He was crashed oh. into a tree. A, a truck ran him off the road. Um, and he was alive when he made it to Womack, even though his records say otherwise. I have that on recording because I, the paramedic lived in my neighborhood. I knew him. So um, I went to his house and I asked him and I didn't even know the other guy that he was trying to avoid hitting the, the, the kid lived next. It's so crazy. The whole story is crazy how he died. I know he left the NCO club. He had stopped by um, it's, it was called the watering hole, which is another club that my friend actually owns now, which is funny. Um, but he hadn't drank anything and he was literally two streets away from our house. And it's called Bill Shaw Road is the name of the road. And I dreamed about this before he passed. But in my dream, he died on his motorcycle, not in his truck. So it was the same spot, same road, different vehicle. And so I was always angry with myself because I thought that if I had gotten it right, because I have the email still of me talking to my father about this, you know, and he laughed because, he, you know, he was egotistical and arrogant. He had gone all the way around the world and didn't die. So he didn't think a vehicle was going to take him out. You know, he was just. He laughed. He didn't believe in that. I stuff. mean, you were, so you, you were so far off. You had the location and the time, but you didn't get the vehicle right. So it's just totally garbage, right? It really <laughs> fucked my head up, though. I'm not gonna lie. It really fucked my head up. Just because I thought, I thought, like, if I would have in my head, if I would have had that right, it would have played differently. You know, it wouldn't. Have. Do you and think you would have stopped logical. him though? <laughs> Do you really think you would have stopped him though? Probably not, but I. I just, I don't know. That's that's something I play over in my head over and over and over again. Because, like, I told you I was dealing with social services at that point in time. Because I told you I had called them on myself and I had moved back to Florida. 
Um, so my adopted mother was trying to get custody of my, my oldest son because he looks just like me. She didn't want anything to do with my, my baby at that time because he looked like his father, but she wanted my oldest son. So I was dealing with social services trying to get my, my kid. And I had three caseworkers um, fired at that point in time because I had just graduated school for childhood education and they wanted me to do parenting classes. And I'm like, that's fine, but I'm not waiting two fucking weeks for a referral. You're going to have that referral done this Friday and I'm going to start it Monday. And when that caseworker wanted to drag her heels, I called her boss and called her boss's boss and went up the chain of command and they didn't like that too well. So when I went to the court dates, you know, to see whether or not I was going to be allowed to keep my son or not, my dad had already died. Um, and while I'm sitting there in the courtroom, they play this recording of my father. I guess they had called him and he told them everything about my adopted mother and the abuse and how she had her rights taken away from me, from me. So she had no legal standing to be able to even try and get custody of my kid because she legally wasn't my mother anymore. And he is the only reason why I was able to keep my son and having to listen to that recording after he died really ate me up and i don't even know if i'm able to even get access to that if they keep those or not or how that whole thing goes about but i would love to to get that recording yeah i can see that was in st lucie county fort pierce florida 2006. it's not far no <laughs> said that you're Fort Pierce is my favorite little island. If you ever want to go to a place to like relax, go to North Beach. Go to the cove. I've been there many times. Ah, uh, that's my home. That's where all my that I lived on that island for like five years. <laughs> that's crazy. That's where my soul family lives. Everybody's linked to Florida somehow. It oh everybody. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. I used to live in Panama City, Homestead, Kinley, um, Kendale. Um, and I'm like, is where I ran away too. to, but it's not a place to live because trafficking is at an all time high there. That's a whole nother story. Do you want to hear about when I almost got kidnapped by a pimp? Yes. It's yes. not she related to any of that stuff. It's separate, but um, this is back in 2005 before I had my babies, right when I first found my birth mom. And we had gone to Miami, and actually, me and her got in a fight. This is around my birthday. And she was sleeping with some dude, and I got mad at her. So, like, um, I went to go hang out with this 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 one guy, and I thought it was cool. I was really dumb and gullible. This is back in MySpace time. I had no business hanging out with these people. If we're going to be honest, I was mentally younger than my peers. So, yeah, I looked bit, you know, I looked nice and all, but I mentally was way younger than everyone else. So I'm hanging out with this dude. Everything's fine. Um, he buys me this bottle of liquor I'm drinking. And then next thing I know, like, the energy shifts. It gets really uncomfortable. And, you know, like, I only knew him because the girl that he was dating, I used to go to school with her in middle school. And we hooked up on MySpace. She said she lived local. My mom met up with her and her boyfriend. I was going to go spend the weekend with them. And then she was going to meet me back with my mom. And then I was going to go back with her. Everything seemed fine in the car until we pull up into the house. The house, it's in an upscale area. It was like a, a rich neighborhood. Didn't think anything of it until I get in the house. This man takes off his shoes. And I shit you not, he drops down like two inches. Like he was wearing shoes that makes you taller. <laughs> like, and I'm like, I, I, my phone and my purse is in the car. And I'm freaking out. Like I walk in and like I see to my right, there's two bedrooms and there's bunk beds in the room, in each room. And I'm like, ooh, red flag, this is weird. You know, like I just every every alarm that could possibly go off was going off. And I was still a virgin at this time. I had no like it, what? You know, I was freaking the fuck out. So he like takes off his shoes and he looks at me and he's like, Here's the deal. This is how it is. I'm not a boyfriend, I'm a pimp, and this is how it's gonna go down. And I don't even know how much time passed. I remember I was just standing there. I don't even know how long I stood there, but I know they ordered pizza. And um, as soon as the pizza man came, I ran the fuck out that door. I didn't have shoes on. I was barefoot. I got in his car and he took me to the gas station. Um, he called the police while we were in the car and I um, ran into the gas station and used their phone to call my mom. Um, the girls got in the vehicle and had followed us to the gas station and was circling the parking lot. Damn. And I stayed inside. I was not leaving that fucking place. So my mom, at that point in time, I had got a hold of her. She had gotten a hold of the cops. They rolled it. This we we ended up being in a place called Hialeah. I have oh. never gone there, but <laughs> oh, somewhere I know outside. Oh, Hialeah well. Hialeah well. Okay, so that's where I ended up was located. It was in Hialeah. So my mom came with these cops, and then they escorted us back to the house, and I was able to get my belongings, and they arrested them. I have no clue what happened after that. I left, <laughs> but like it scared the shit out of me because like what would have happened? What would yeah. happen to had, yeah. I mean, God, I don't even want to think about it because, like, I mean, it scared the shit out of me. And then, literally, a year, not even a year later, six months later, I got another fight with my mom. And I had gone to Mississippi 
to go hang out with my other friend at MSU, and then I got stuck in a fucking hurricane. It was freaking ridiculous. You have excellent luck. Excellent. Excellent. So I got stuck at MSU for two weeks. Because Katrina was a bitch. Katrina was crazy. We were out there freaking playing um, drunken football in the middle of a Category 5 hurricane. <laughs> Excellent idea. It's your fault the levee broke. Fault, the levee broke. <laughs> right? Have you guys ever gone windsurfing? It's fun. <laughs> Not during Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Damn. I we got the pops called on us during her His name Katrina. was Troy Lee Metters. That's the guy I was dating out there. I should look up his mama. She was so sweet. <laughs> Just blowing up what, everyone's spot. What were you saying, Death? Maybe we can get him on. I got that. <laughs> to oh, corroborate probably. that he story. He's a good kid. Yeah, he's a good kid. His mama would talk lovely about me. I still talk to her. We're on Facebook. <laughs> Death, you got the cops called on you in the hurricane? Yeah, during Katrina, because me and my little brother were outside with a giant bed sheet trying to get taken up into the air. <laughs> oh, that's glorious. We were actually... You guys know where Fort Pierce is, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Find the curve. So when we used to live out there, every New Year's, we would burn our Christmas trees. It's like our tradition out there. We Everyone would go to the island, you know, and bring their Christmas trees out to the beach, and we would have bonfires. Yeah. Well, this is like back in the day before, like, you know, you could just tweet anything. It was MySpace, so you'd shout it out, and I guess, like, the party got shouted out to everybody, and so, like, we had all these young bucks pull up with keggers, and, like, you know, originally it was just a small-ass bonfire. Next thing we know, the entire beach is outlined with people. There's people pushing babies and strollers, and then the fucking Coast Guard comes, so you see people spreading out everywhere, choppers, like, with their lights everywhere, and, like, everyone's just running down the beach. There's literally a, a lady pushing a fucking baby in the stroller, and so we're sitting there. We stayed because we were the original people that started the party, and the cops come, and they're like, look, you know, we're not going to shut it down, but you got to clean the beach up. So we got like eight kegs for free, dude. It was a badass night, dude. It was fun as fuck. Wow. <laughs> it was cool shit. <laughs> they let us keep it all. <laughs> um, another good reference for out there is Karen Kowalski. I've known her since 2005. That's my my children's godmother. Um, she is a witness to everything that has happened thus far. She's a good person to talk to. I actually have a lot of connections. Um, Archie's, Archie's, I don't know if you ever know about that. But anybody that knows of Fort Pierce, Florida knows of Archie's. That's actually where I found my birth mom. Was at that location. So wow. It's really kind of, that's was my home. Work, was she working there or eating there? Or what was, no, know. actually she was doing construction at uh, Harbor, uh, Harbor Isles was the name of the high rises. And that's just there where they would go and drink. So my mom was and what you like said that she was going to be there for what? Well, um, well, no, I had found her. Um, I, I told you I had found her through a dream. So what had happened? This I didn't tell you how I found her. Okay. Yeah. So let me yeah. go back to that story. So I had this dream my whole life of a fire station, and right beside the fire station was a graveyard and like a little park. It was run down, and I had drawn this picture my whole life. My dad was deployed at that time, so I was living with my neighbor. Oh, well, that's another story. <laughs> He had okay. My neighbor had killed himself when we were 15 years old. Um, his birthday was five days before me. His mom was really, really like losing it. I was losing it because my stepmom was abusive when my dad deployed. So the neighbors, um, whenever I would run away, they would hide me. So he got tired of me running away. So he went to my dad's and I was like, "Look, she's moving with me. You need to sign over guardianship." Blah 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 blah. Or I'm gonna tell on you. I guess he blackmailed him. So my dad wrote a very guardianship to my neighbor so that I could live with him um, and his wife while my dad was deployed so I didn't have to stay with my stepmom. So that's how they came into the picture. But Miss Melissa is her name. She um, used to work with children that would get in trouble. Like, so if you had community service, she would take you to the location, drop you off, and blah, 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 blah. So she had dropped off those kids, and she had taken, she was taking me to the hospital that I was born at to try and see if we could find any type of information. Because all I knew was my birth mother's first name was Callie you know I, I didn't know she had changed at that point in time so I'm sitting here trying to ask if anyone knew this woman and a baby that was born at this time blah 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 blah. we had no luck at all we're talking about it in the car and the kid in the back seat is like I know her that's my aunt and I'm like wait what <clears throat> so we're talking about it you know and like I'm going to drop we're dropping off this kid and his mom's there 
and I get off. She looks just like me. It's fucking crazy. Um, it, it was really surreal in the moment. And like, um, we're talking about it. She knew who I was when she saw me. So she, she's like, I don't know if your grandparents still live where they live at, but I remember where they used to live at. I can at least take you to the house and see if maybe, you know, you can find your mom. So I get to the house and my grandfather is getting ready to leave. He like, he was getting in, you know, like the trucks that like tow trucks, like when a car breaks down. Yes. That's what he did. Yes. So he was getting in a tow truck and I walked up <laughs> to him and I asked him, I was like, excuse me, sir, is your name Jimmy Williford? And he's like, yes. And I was like, do you have a daughter named Callie? And he's like, no, I have a daughter named Kelly. And I was like, uh, and he pointed towards the door. So I went to the door and I knocked on the door and this little lady came out and I didn't even have to say who I was. She knew who I was because I looked just like my mom and that's my grandma. And uh, she was able to get a hold of my mom. I wasn't able to talk to her for like a week because it took her that long to, to be able to contact her. Um, she was living in New York. I know it's in Syracuse at that point in time. And then I know that my mom came down i don't know if it was that christmas or if it was that spring break but it was sometime a couple months after and i got to meet her and and that's how the story started damn but it was all through that dream but, well yeah right crazy. before yeah but right when we dropped him off that was where the fire department was and the, the you know graveyard it was literally right across the street from his fucking house damn so we are it, at like are an at hour and like 40 an minutes and people 40. have very short attention <laughs> strands. So. No, no, no. It's and cool. I no, barely no, no. touched it. I know. <laughs> I, so I know. That's how it, that's how it always goes. But so, but so just to just wrap it up wrap in, some it way, in some way, like what's like, what do you I want everyone to know? I people to research Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and how it correlates with UFOs and PSI. And maybe bring awareness that they have tested and tortured on children for PSI research. I would love it if people could just dig into Wright Patterson Air Force Base and the projects that they've been involved in. I think that it would help a lot of people. I feel like um, a lot of this ties back to that one location. Sure, a lot Excellent. Of it does. Yes. And wh where can um people find the information that you're providing on TikTok? Oh, so uh, I use my my real name on all my okay. platforms. So my first and last name. I also have a backup account because they keep trying to banana me. <laughs> but um, I post all the declassified files. I post redacted and non-redacted versions. So if I find it, I post them both. Awesome. So I'll Excellent. tag your TikTok and everything on Rumble. YouTube doesn't let you tag. Well, you might be able to tag TikTok on YouTube. I'll see. But it'll all be in there. Everything I can add, Everything I will. I add, so everybody will know. And where then to I find would it. recommend um, talking to my uncle. I can go ahead and send you his information if you want to. But his name is Mark Maggard. He is on Twitter. Yeah, I wrote it down and I follow him also. So I will be able to find him. Excellent. He is currently sure. locked in a facility in Texas. He is a veteran. Um, that's a whole other situation. I have to help him get back to East Coast. But he. he Trauma bonding. He has kids out there, and you know he doesn't want to abandon them. But it, his situation is really sad. Wait, he's in prison? No, he's not in prison. He's a ve a wounded veteran. Oh, okay, so okay. Locked him into a facility. Got you. So he is speaking out just because he he doesn't think that he has that much time. Well, then we should definitely reach out to him as soon as possible. Yeah, we will for sure. Yeah, will. And, and I have years and years worth of messages and screenshots and everything from him, too. So just in case he tried to, like, cover all bases. Like, I guess my – oh, that's another story. My aunt was um, assaulted. My aunt had this weird disorder where she couldn't feel pain whatsoever. So, like, she was hit in the head with a baseball bat, assaulted. And, you know, I told you my dad was a Green Beret. And this is before I was born. So I guess what had happened was my dad found this guy's name. And he had locked himself in this room for, like, months and, like, was targeting him, trying to find all the information about this guy. And then that guy disappeared. They never found him again. So I think my dad unalived him. It's entirely possible with what we've heard tonight. Entirely possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my uncle knows the name of that man and all that stuff, too. So. <laughs> yeah, do you have, like, one last crazy story from one of your uncles that you can kind of, like, take it out with? Let me think. Oh, I know that uh, we assassinated uh, somebody really important in Kenya back in February, and that it went wrong, and that's why we moved all our military personnel back stateside. 
actually, you know what's really crazy about that is I have someone. I, I screen recorded to. the whole conversation, so I got the bass. I got what they were doing. I got them in the car. I, I have someone who I talked to in my DMs that was telling me about how that assassination went wrong and a bunch of stuff. So, yeah. I, I, I and I got it on knew. screen record because I screen recorded the whole phone call with him. That's crazy. That's the, what I was telling you. I was trying to protect his um, identity because yeah. he works from embassy yeah. to embassy. Wow. I was actually supposed to marry his son. Our My father and, and him had arranged it. <laughs> um, and it's crazy. His son lives in my town. Tell me that's not weird. And he, eh, Maybe that's a it was meant story. to be. That's another podcast. Maybe you just took the wrong eh, path. I think, it's the, I, think it's, I think it's different. I think yes. it's, it's intentional. So I moved right. to Phoenix, he moved to Phoenix. When I moved to Florida, he moved to Florida. I moved back to North Carolina. He lives in the same town I live in. That's creepy. You either it have is. the worst have... luck or I don't know. They got it out for no, you. No, I don't I know. Don't know. I, think, I think it's the opposite. Like, you know, like when like most people, when you go into a room, you, you, you catch through the thread is and you steer clear. I feel like I subconsciously go towards it because if I don't eliminate the threat, then I'm going to have anxiety the rest of the time. So I think I subconsciously maybe bring it on myself. Okay. That adds up. I mean, if you're seeking it out, you're going to find it. So it's really, yeah. At and, it. I, at it. and I didn't think about like what I, my, my only goal since age seven was I was going to hold these people accountable and then I was going to be happy. I never really had high expectations for being famous or having a lot of money or being, you know, like most kids, they dream of, you know, being an actress or being, an, you know, an attorney. Like all I ever wanted was justice. So like, I kind of feel like I, I didn't really understand the level of what that would entail or how, how heavy that of a burden that was for a seven-year-old to make. And I, I, I still think going back, I wouldn't change anything. I still think I would hold, I would do it all again. I'd probably just hug people a little bit longer, you know, knowing what I know. I wouldn't change anything just because I feel like what's happened had to happen, which is, it sucks saying that because I'd love to have my mom. I'd love to have my dad, but I, I don't feel like I would have had the emotional uh, capacity. I, I don't, I think I would have been, I would have been complacent. I would have been okay with just having my mom. I wouldn't have chased the rest of this. I would have just lived. I'd have been okay. And I feel like if, you know, life, because I'm the type of person that doesn't let go of people, um, life kind of pushes me out of the way. You know, if that makes sense. Like, oh, you're not going to leave. You're not going to go. Well, here, we'll just take the rug out from under your feet. And now you have to walk. Yeah. I get what you mean. It does. So, wow. We have learned a lot tonight. And I'm going to. This is one I'm going to have to go back and listen to a couple times to take it on. Oh, yeah. Because it's definitely a lot of Well, anytime you want to talk about it, let you know, and send me an invite. I appreciate it. Like I said, this is practice for getting, you know, when I finally get there. For real podcasts? For real. This is practice for this real is, podcasts? No, this is practice for court. <laughs> I feel like I have this image in my head when I get into the courtroom. Like, the, the attorney's going to be brutal, right? Like, yeah. it's going to be an ass yeah. act. That's his job. So, <laughs> If I can take regular trolls, you know, that's why on on TikTok, I go into the debate rooms. I go into the conflict rooms because if I can find common ground or somewhere, you know, one little thing that we can agree on, then I feel like that's winning. Awesome. That's a great way to look at it. So it is. It was awesome to have you. This is always where we say death faded out. So we will definitely be talking more on Twitter and I will talk to your uncle and we'll see what we can set up with him and I will link everything you have to this and just keep doing what you're doing and pushing forward. You also have full permission to call my grandma if you want to. If you can get her to talk, please. Oh, awesome. All that information is public information. So if you know how to look for it, then it's the correct phone number you can find on Google. Awesome. awesome. Think, and perhaps... I think Go Death ahead. is into older women anyway, so he has a way with them. So we'll, kinda, we'll let him talk to him. <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I can't Neither even talk after that now. <laughs> all right, guys. All right, it's been thank fantastic. Thank you so much for thank being you, here. Angela. We'll talk to you soon, all right? Yep, thanks, Angela. Thank you. Have thank a good night. You. All, right. all right, you too. Later.